Hello and welcome everybody to the Join the Tele season number 3. We finally got this game underway. About a 15 minute delay, but it's to be expected when you're just casting or watching Southeast Asian Dota, I guess. Unfortunately so, but that's the sad truth of it. But it's going to be Arrow Gaming versus Immunity Dota in a two game series. This is going to be actually the last match of the group stage. It doesn't change too much for Arrow Gaming whether they win or lose here, but. I mean, Arrow Gaming, they won't get to the playoffs anyway, even if they win 2-0 here. But Immunity, if they do win 2-0 themselves, they will have a chance at a tiebreaker game with Kingdom to decide who's going to have to go into the Division 1 and 2 playoffs and who's just going to drop out into Division 2 straight out. So, I mean, both teams may definitely want to win just because of the sake of winning. But Immunity may be a little bit more on the line, depending on if, even if they're... Gonna continue as a team since they've been using different stand-ins for quite that time now. I mean, K Feeney, he has been standing in for at least, I mean, a stable stand-in in a sense. So might be a permanent member later on if the team doesn't disband or anything. But the others just, they're taking whoever they can more or less. But we're in the draft now. Enough about the teams. Brewmaster was the ban by Arrow Gaming together with the Viper. Doombringer though, the first ban from Immunity and will they ban out a Lycan now? Faces Void, of course, also an extremely strong hero, but man, Dire Side Lycan, it is so scary to go up against. I mean, it's not like Lycan is a 100% to win, even on the Dire Side, but it's still pretty hard to stop, and you're gonna have to play out of your mind to do so. But they do ban out the Faceless Void and Arrow. Do they even go for that Lycan now? Some teams, as well as overall in some certain drafts, that hero gets completely overlooked. Maybe banned out as the fifth one or something, but sometimes not banned, not picked completely. Maybe this is gonna be one of the games as Death Prophet is the first pick for Arrow. So Immunity, Radiant Side Lycan, or are they gonna risk giving away a Lycan plus a Death Prophet for Arrow? It's, man, it feels like too much, but maybe if you don't go for first pick Lycan, you don't go for it at all. There are st still other uh, really strong pushing heroes who maybe are a little bit more stable in a sense. Something like a Shadow Shaman, Nature's Prophet maybe. We will see, I mean, if Immunity don't pick up a Lycan, I would be extremely surprised if Arrow didn't go for it, I mean, just the amount of push that they could have, plus also some pretty nice fighting potential, I mean, Lycan, he can be just such a painful hero, just right click wise as well, depending on his item build. We will see what they want to go for Immunity. What other options do they have? Huh. I'm, I'm completely blanking. Razor, definitely one. Razor, Shadow Shaman, Skyrim of Mage potentially coming out as well there. I, I feel like I'm missing something. Some hero I'm overlooking at the moment. Oh, don't care. It's going to be Skyrim of Mage to begin with, with a Nature's Prophet, so immunity. They're going for some push of their own, but I don't know. Do we see the Wolfie? Do we see the Lycan? Or are they just like, screw these guys, not strong enough, and I guess that's exactly what they're going for. Razor was the pick instead for Arrow, so... I mean, extremely solid hero. Somebody to build the mech for them, and most likely will be a Razor tri-lane now, which is actually extremely potent. You can easily go aggressive tri-lane with this as well, if you just want to. Whereas Immunity, just Nature Prophet Skyraf. Solid offlaner with a pretty good support. I guess he can play in the mid lane as well if he really wants to, but... More often than not, it's just in a support role. But I don't know, looking at the secondary set of bands, Bristleback was taken out. Uh, usually Bristleback played in a, as an offlaner, but... It can, it can be in a tri-lane chest as well. Pretty annoying to deal with the quill sprays. Plus of course, doesn't really care too much about the static link. Yes, you never want to give Razor additional damage if you can help it, but... Quill sprays would still be able to damage you. As well as, if you're going for some form of push, having a Bristleback is actually pretty good. Just uh, because you can make it so that the enemy cannot contest the pushing because the Bristleback is just zoning everybody out, spamming the quill sprays, and even if you initiate on him, one of the worst heroes to actually go on just because of how tanky he is. But Lycan was the secondary band, so Arrow didn't care about the dire side Lycan, but now that Nature Prophet is on immunity, they don't really want to risk it and well Batrider was banned out by immunity just a second guys
Anyway. Immunity. What could they ban out? I guess some other offlaners. Tidehunter is definitely one. Centaur I wouldn't mind at all. Centaur is actually pretty nice against Skyref as well. Just because, first of all, he's tanky to actually potentially survive up against Mystic Flare. But use the Stampede to get other out of Mystic Flare, for example. I mean, Centaur, Tidehunter. I guess there aren't too many other just common offlaners left after that. Bristleback already banned out. Every now and then you see a Brewmaster there, but... Immunity actually, they've banned out three offlaners. Actually make it four now. Doom, Faceless Void, Pat, and the Tidehunter. Yes, you can play the heroes in other positions as well, but... That's where they usually end up in. As a center now, the pick for immunity. Oh, what? How are they gonna lane this? Is it gonna be a tri-lane Nature's Prophet or a mid-lane Nature's Prophet? Or just still having the... Uh, Solid Nature Prophet off lane and Centaur in a tri lane. It could definitely happen. I've seen, I think, uh, Invasion have run it most often, at least from the games I have casted myself personally. Just a Centaur tri lane, whether it be aggressive or defensive. But Arrow, what do they respond with? They still need the supports. I still think Shadow Shaman would be an excellent one. A decent enough counter push with the Aether Shock. Hex, Shackles for the lockdown, plus Mass Serpent Wars for additional push getting earlier Roshans, and that way, they could use Mass Serpent Wars for Roshan and then still have Exorcism up for a team fight after that, or if you're going for a push. Or the other way around as well, although I would prefer Mass Serpent Wars for Rosh and Exorcism for team fight uh, rather than the other way around. But Rubik is the first pick for them, so just out to steal the Stampede. Hoof Stomp also nice, of course. Nature Prophet teleportation, not too shabby, neither is the Wrath of Nature. Even stealing the three ends if you're actually pushing yourself at the same time. So I can't say it's a bad pick, didn't quite expect it to come out, but it's, it's a really strong hero all in all. I mean, even without uh, stealing any spells, just having the telekinesis as well as the fate bolt is always nice. But not only that, if he actually chooses to scale up his passive, the null field, you will also get 5% of magic resistance for your entire team in an AoE around you, for every point you put into it. So, considering you're up against a Centaur and a Sky of Mage, that might actually come quite in handy here. And oh no man, oh no immunity, no they didn't. Tinker plus Nature's Prophet. It's, it's Cancer man, Tinker and Nature's Prophet. This global presence now, Arrow, they're gonna either have to just draft something that can actually deal with the global presence. I mean, something like a Morphling, but it really wouldn't fit into the lineup at all. But maybe an Ember Spirit, potentially. Just send Ember Spirit safe lane up against Centaur or Nature's Prophet or the Death Prophet into the safe lane solo. And have Ember Spirit... Actually, they could still do still like an Ember Spirit tri lane, but oh, picking up a Bounty Hunter now. It's a hero that I haven't seen for a long, long while. I think Cloud9 is a team that plays it or has played it the most, but I haven't really seen too many Cloud9 games myself. But Bounty Hunter definitely a solid enough hero for the snowball aspect. You need to get level 6 of course, but even having just uh, the track on Tinker can already be enough. Just to make sure that Tinker, if he blinks into the trees, you still have vision of him and when you have vision, there's a potential to kill all of a sudden. But Shadow Shaman was the last pick from Immunity, last ban rather. Finally they get banned out Arrow Gaming, I still think it would have been a really good pickup for them. As Sand King was taken out by Arrow Gaming themselves. They don't want to give any more lockdown as well as magic burst to immunity by, by the looks of it. So, we'll see now. 20 more seconds left for immunity for their last pick. They, they need an additional support unless they want to run something like a jungle enigma at the moment. Go extremely super greedy. But that would mean that there will be no stacks for Tinker apart from the ancients. Which he should be able to stack for himself really here. But we'll see. They have actually 13 seconds of reserve time left now as well. So not too long still altogether. And Darrow, do they have their last pick planned out? Oh, it was the Enigma. They are going super greedy on this. Of course, now it means there are even more units for the Tinker to TP to possibly. Eidolons plus the three ends of the Nature's Prophet. Plus they actually have a pretty crazy amount of pushing power themselves. Whereas Arrow, yes, they do have the Death Prophet with the Exorcism. The potential to actually have uh, Aghanim Scepter 
uh, Static Storm, but... Holy crap, man, this this lineup of immunity. But Clockwork was the last pick for Adam, so Mozon is going to play a, be playing a support Bounty Hunter. I think, at least, that it's going to be like a dual offlane, Clockwork and Bounty Hunter, with Bounty Hunter having his priority up on the Enigma in the jungle. Just mess his jungling up completely, block the camps, steal the B-Creeps before the Enigma kills them, maybe kill off the Eidolons, especially early on, the Eidolons aren't actually all that scary when they haven't propagated yet, haven't doubled themselves. So, should be an interesting game. Immunity might be more on the passive side. Yes, they want to go for towers, but don't think they will overextend, or at least they shouldn't. Just play it safe, and come late game, it. I think Immunity probably has the upper hand, I would think. And just the Tinker him, himself is already so damn sick. Death Prophet, of course, if he snowballs, he can just melt through heroes. Just It's going to be so damn painful. But, Enigma went to the toilet. Okay, so we're having a small pause here. Hopefully, for number one, not for number two. But I guess we can over go over the lineups as it is then. So for immunity, Bald Head will be playing the Nature Prophet, leaving Kayfini on the Tinker with Godot to play the Enigma Musica from MVP Hot 6 otherwise on the Centaur and Risk to play the Skyrath Mage. As for Arrow Gaming, Lance is up on the Razor, leaving TDZ to play the Death Prophet, Mosen on a Bounty Hunter, Xiang Sai to play the Clockwork, and the last one for them will be MTR on the Rubik. Go Go has been given no resume yet. Arrow actually one is smoking. I you kidding me, right? Like, what? Why? First, you show up late to the game, and then, like, yeah, one guy is smoking during the draft, or I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a little bit weird. Anyway, hopefully the smoking, the toilets, whatever things might be holding us up won't take all that long. I'm excited to get some Dota underway, finally. Uh, so yeah, like I said, immunity, they probably have the better late game. Early game though, it will depend heavily on how well this bounty hunter will do. Can or will he even at all go into the enemy jungle to just make Enigma's life a living hell or... Do they have other plans in mind? Because man, having the bounty hunter like this as a support and the clockwork offlane, it's not like it, that sort of laning is not greedy, but... Where's this clockwork? Kyrie of Mage, he's going to have to be the solo hero to box off the clockwork pretty much if they have whether they have centaur nature prophet or tinker on that same lane i don't think it matters all that much up in, uh, or for clockwork so in that sense arrow with their own lineup a little bit greedy on the levels of course if they can get the track kills going it's going to be excellent for them just uh, go for hook shots get track kills and snowball that way but a support bounty hunter, we will see how well he can do. Cloud Knight, they have definitely made it work a couple of times, especially sniping the Kudiris as well. But, we'll see if he can play at the same level as... Ooh, Bolt Head, already tipping in aggressively just to place down some wards. And exactly what he does as well, now we're run back home, or back somewhere at least. And can it be actually Enigma offlane here with Nature's Prophet jungle? Or, that what? Do they really want to go into the enemy jungle? I'm not too sure what they're trying to do here. It's... Maybe they are doing something extremely crazy. And anyway, we definitely want to deny one creep out of one lane, whichever one it may be. But yeah, I think it's yeah, still going to be an H Prophet top lane. Just had some tango shared to him. Nice. Well, some annoying pings go out, like extremely annoying. TDZ, stop it, man! TDZ, why? What do we have up, up against Xiang Sai, man? Why? What? Why? Well, he's gonna start coaxing up the creeps most likely at the moment. Start the body blocks, maybe try to get them into the trees here. I guess TDZ was like, you have to get them here. Just cox, eat one cork that is right to the trees. So the creeps can run this way, or this is the only way they can run. Oh, Mosen! As an invisible one, Haystrom picked up on the top lane by Bald Head, Bald Head though. And look at this Mosen. He started with the Orb of Venom, so... Might be the Kanking style of support bounty here. Ah, uh, Skyfinia, the Tinker. 
Starting with Boots. So I guess he's a little bit wary of the potential roaming ganks coming in. Of course, that will delay his portal by quite a bit, but Death Prophet, you will have a little bit of a better time in just last hitting because of that uh, Null Talisman, but other than that, his portal shouldn't be all that much faster considering both of them should be getting their own last hits here. As Mozo, not gonna find anything with his first uh, Shadow Walk. Ah, Shadow Walk. I haven't seen Bounty Hunter or Playday Bounty Hunter for such a long time, I don't even remember that. But Godot might be in trouble, top lane, no the creep wave is far enough back, it looks like Mosen. His enemies is about to wear off as well, so couldn't accomplish anything yet, and a dual off lane. I'm not too sure how good of a plan this is, I guess they were expecting immunity that is for the jungle to be completely warded off, and oh, it's Yangsan, he's cogging off Musica, I'm pretty sure he didn't want to actually cog him in the cogs, he wanted to get the mana burn, the pushback, and the health burn of course as well at the same time. As Risk now finally joins the bottom lane here. Starts with an arcane bot onto Xiang Sai, but a Clockwork is tanky enough, I think, especially with his Tower Shield. And Skyrath has to be careful since Clockwork, once he hits level 2 or above, actually, even especially above, if you get caught in the cogs as well as the battery assault, you're pretty much done for. Don't think you can escape it easily as a Skyrath Mage. As Battery Assault activated, Xiang Sai, he's gonna go for this cunning for it. Can he get the cogs properly here? No, he cannot risk. He actually got out of it. 3, 2, 5 movement speeds, man. A little bit too strong here. Otherwise, I think it would have been an easy kill. The two creeps even would have helped out a little bit. Killing off the Sky of Mage. And if you can get a, uh, a first blood as an offlaner. That's pretty much the best thing you can do. But now, concussion shot onto Xiang Sai. They're gonna get slowed down. Can they get the hoof top as well? Yes, they can. Double edge. I think it's gonna be the first blood. It's just gonna take a little bit of time. Arcane bolt. The double edge actually music. He's holding onto Xiang Sai. Trying to eat his way through the trees. Risk. He's gonna have to get the body block, can he get it though properly? Some more arcane walls, there's the cogs pushing Musica back and actually Xiaxai might not even die here, are you kidding me? As in the meantime, top lane, MTR throws first blood onto Godot's Enigma. That main just Musica holding onto the double edge for such a long time. Actually, it was only level 1 but still 175 damage. I do believe it would have been enough. Of course, nice cogs by Xiaxai, not panicking there, just... Running here, Cogs to push back the Centaur and Centaur now out of mana, can't go for another Hoof Tomb. So Xiang Sai, although he's out short of mana himself, he should feel rather safe. I mean, Skyref Concussion Shot itself wouldn't have been enough and well, Skyref, he's also out of mana. So Xiang Sai, all he has to worry about is just some right clicks and the double edge, that's it. So looking good, he is level 4. And oh, bolt hit! He's level 3 and a half as well, but not for long, I think, Mosen. He has the Chinada, there's the Telekinesis, Chinada slow. We have the Orb of Energy, going for the TP out, but there's no, no thing, nothing, no thing, nothing to stop it. <laughs> oh man, my tongue got twisted here. But, I actually thought it's gonna be like an easy kill, but... That's what you get when you use Telekinesis early on, and there's no point yet into Shuriken Toss. I do believe Chinada is the better choice anyway, if you're trying to go for the ganks. Since just additional slow, the burst damage, as well as if you find a courier, you have a better chance of killing it. As Godot finally has rotated into his own jungle. One ward already got dewarded. I think there was a sentry around here somewhere, so... Might have already expired as well though. Not 100% sure here. As Kayfin, he has his bottle mid lane. 12 last hits compared to 14, but Mozon now. I think the Shadow Walk was spotted out, but he won't get it. Get the rune first. Yeah, it's just Mozon, he might go for risk for a little bit of harass a little bit along the way. If you go for Tinker, I mean he has a haste run anyway, so yeah. Risk is the better choice here. Oh, sentry stow, risk. Did he even see it? It was night time, so he might not have even had vision there to be honest. I say he's gonna go come bottom lane instead. Xiang Sai has enough for a battery assault as well as the cogs. Just barely. One second. Now. Now he does. But Mosin Shadow Walk still in effect. Come on, go go right click risk. Just go do it. Maybe he didn't have vision, but Shadow Walk expires. Godot has himself that uh, soul ring finished now. But Mosin, no, actually he's not giving up. They really want to go and somebody here. Double edge from Musica, pushing the lane out a little bit. I don't think Mosin can get the perfect angle for it though. Clockwork at least has pull to speed. Does the Skyrim have them? No, he does not, so. If they can get close enough, should be an easy kill, but Scarf Magic, he's playing far enough back. 
And finally, Mosin is like, yeah, screw this guy, just clarity up, another shadow walk, head towards the mid lane instead, kill off the Tinker, which should always be a priority when you're up against the Tinker, just shut him down or slow him down, if not shut him down completely. But Mosin, actually, never mind, he pinged out the double camp himself. So he's seeing that people are farming or stacking for Tinker. Go that back to the top lane, actually, level 4. They are farming at the side camp with the three ends, even doing a side pull, but mid lane, they get the slow one to cave in, one more right click Mosin, he picks up the kill, they do take some damage in return from the march to the machines, but I think that's a trade they are always willing to make here. So another kill goes for arrow, 2-0 so far, 6 minutes in, a rather passive game, of course immunity they've been on the defensive for the majority of it anyway, and thanks to that arrow, they do have the two highest farmers in the game, 34 and 6. Up on DDC Death Prophet as Plasma Field comes through, trying to kill the Eidolons, a few more Rikers Fate Ball comes through as well. Actually it didn't bounce to the heroes for some reason. But Eidolons down, some extra gold going for the way of Arrow and Immunity, they have to be a little bit wary of that. Having the Treants as well as the Eidolons, if you feed both of them, it's gonna be a lot of gold or a lot of additional gold that the enemy otherwise shouldn't have. Now Xiangxai has his hookshot ready, has his power threats and the intelligence. And they want to go for the ganks Mosin, he's, he's gonna be the one to scout things out. Some more pings come out. Yeah, there's still this double stack here. Guys, TDC. Oh, TDC has a regen rune. Oh, a few more creeps forms. He's gonna make sure that he actually doesn't get hit by any creeps before he activates the regen. And yeah, it's easy farm, easy life. He needs one more though. It is level 3. And yeah, that's that's the farm. Mozon even getting some levels from it. Another shadow war comes out. Xiang Sai though. Goes back to the bottom lane. Come on, go hookshot. Hookshot risk. You can do it. Oh, hookshot the range crypto, tanking things up for him. And now the slow, never mind. Nice cogs, Musica can't get close enough. Doesn't have his own blink dagger, but he is only 500 gold away. As TDC even stole the secondary stack here, a double stack. I mean, it's not the biggest of deals, but it's still something since Kayfin actually just finished up the soul ring. Needs another 1.9k for those boots of travel. So, not getting any kills, not pushing down towers. It does slow them down. A little bit and now look at the TDZ. The greed oriented the Death Prophet. As K Phoenix, he scouted out, but just going for a march with the machines. It's not like Arrow can do that much. They don't really want to <laughs> dive into the march, really. And K Phoenix, he has enough mana to actually keep going. A few bottle charges were expended already, but just fine, he's just fine with it. As Death Prophet activates the enemy's rune, coming in from the side. Bounty Hunter Mose and he's camping there as well, top lane, bald head, actually he TP'd in, Mo MTR, can he get the telekinesis onto Godot? Yes he can, DDC, he's there as well, exorcism popped, and Godot, well, he just got bursted by the Fate Ball, Plasma Field, TDC. actually he's the one to claim the kill, but it's gonna be a tier 1 tower on top of this, most likely, and, well, it's a blink tiger for center, will he make an immediate rotation? He can buy a TP now, with the last creep, the creep last hit. So far, nothing. 3 0 arrow. They're just slowly gaining advantage. Oh, Xiang he went for Musica. Patrick Salt will be off. It's level 3, but Musica, he's pretty damn tanky. Now he uses the Stampede and will get back to safety. Rocket player level 1 wouldn't have even made a difference here. But getting the Stampede on cooldown. As all risk might be in some trouble. No, with the boots, 375 movements, but it's just gonna be fine. If they only had track right about now. Oh, they did get the sentry though. They did see that Skyrim Mage was, or he used one water. So nicely scouted out by whoever did that. Yeah, it was a fresh observer as well. And oh, look at the net worth! 5.3k on TDZ, 3.5 on the next highest in the game, which is on their own team as well. Xiangxi, he dropped a little bit low, actually purchased himself a bottle now. Mozon still scouting out the enemy, and... He's pinging them out just in case as well. Do they want to go for the kills? They don't have the hookshot after all. Mouse on another shadow walk. Yeah, risk. I think he heard the shadow walk, so pings came out. Do they have any detection at all? One sentry on Godot, and that's about it. Musica has the blink there, the sentry went down, and oh, blink hoofed on Mosin. He's going to go down. Double H, no double H yet. Silence up, though. Plasma field comes through, and Mosin actually survives. No, he does not. Wrath of Nature comes through, but one. For one, go dot for bounty hunter, and since it's a pure support bounty, it's a little bit better for Arrow, I think. Especially since, well, ending one, he doesn't have anything at all. Ten minutes in, he is still only level five. 
Plus, only has a soul ring, not even boost of speed. In theory, Enigma is one of the fastest junglers, but just because the lineup of Arrow and how they chose to lane this, they... This Enigma just isn't working out, at least not yet. Maybe he can get a few crazy black holes going, but even with the black holes, he might not get the perfect ones, most uh, notably because of the clockwork. If he has his battery slot activated and you black hole him in, you might just make it so that you suck him in close enough so that the better salt will hit you and stun you. Mid lane though, three heroes grouping up from immunity. Musica wants to find something. TDC is illusion though. Scouting everything out together with this observer, which is blocking the ancients. And like pointed out in the chat as well, by Bobo. I don't even know how to pronounce your name, man. Bobo, son, Bobo, son, something, something. Anyway, like he pointed out, Tinker is so far behind and no ancients either. It's really a huge downside as most. Oh, we got pinged out. Baldhead, he saw him. Can he get the sprout? I think they're baiting this out. Do they have any more detection? Don't think so, risk. Actually, they don't. Nothing at all. They know Mozon is there, but they can't even punish him. That's the worst thing that can happen. As you will set already finished on DLC with a hand of Midas on top of it. That 6.8k. He is just doubling the Tinker's net worth already. 12 minutes in. That is absolutely ridiculous. Let's look at this Kyangsai. He still really got spotted out, but actually the hook shot. He dodges the hoof top. Actually, hoof top. It was cancelled, but Kyangsai still dropping low. Oh, the Quarks catching himself in. The laser comes out. The Lekin is up as well. Lance, can he do enough? KP is dropping low. Mech comes out. They keep everybody alive. Stampede got stolen as well. And Kyardo already used it. But now Musica might be in some trouble. Wants to deny himself. Oh, Plasma Field comes through and he goes down to land. They're going to get more, I think. You'll set her up onto risk. Should be an easy kill as TDC. Drops a little bit low, but go dot. Just level 2 exorcism, too much for them to handle and risk now, shuriken toss, which level is it? It's level 3 already. And 8 to 1, D well, musical D seed, but it was a 4 for 0 exchanger, 4 for 0 guys. Absolutely crazy fight from Arrow, nicely done by Clockwork to actually get the hook shot just before the ho hoof stomp came. As well as the silence was actually already on him, but he already had activated the hook shot. So... He got out of the most trouble, then the corks were pretty damn bad because he corks him himself in around this area here with the mod golems as well as a couple of 3ns I think it was. But Lance with the mech made sure that Xiangxi actually survives, then Xiangxi backed off a little bit, bottled up. Unfortunately though Arrow still, Bounty Hunter is not yet level 6, so all of those kills could have been track kills, could have been so much better but I mean 4 for 0, I think they'll still take it any, di any day, any time. And looking at the graphs now, 8,000 gold lead already. XP, about 6,000 for Arrow. It's safe to say though that they are in complete command of this game. It is their game to throw away. Yes, they are up against the Tinker and the Nature's Prophet. But they're just all so underfound. Look at the net worth chart. I mean, even the offlane clockwork, who isn't doing all that well, but still doing good enough. is surpassing everybody. Support, especially the Enigma, 1.2k net worth, 12 and a half minutes in, it's it's almost unheard of really. And look at this, the tier 1 tower mid lane now, also under some pressure lands. Mech will be off cooldown in about 3 seconds. So with the next creep wave they might get it unless immunity come in plasma field to help out clear the creep wave. Fate bolt as well to help out. And, well immunity they definitely want to come, music has stampede still on cooldown though, MTR. He didn't steal anything else after. Yes, he's also holding on to his own stampede there. And, oh, DDZ. Just farming up the enemy jungle. Has himself that point booster already. Going for a bloodstone next, it looks like. Now with the bloodstone, it, it, it's going to be extremely hard to bring him down, even with a mystic flare, which is still not available. Thank God for arrow and unfortunately for immunity. They really need it, and even then... Hoof Stomp is the best setup they have for it. Black Hole, of course, will do just as well. Malphite might be enough, just barely. Tinker doesn't have anything to slow or lock people down. And still, 40 minutes in. He will now finally, finally get his Boots of Travels. But they are delayed by quite a lot here. Mozen. Just getting some bottle charges uh, from Xiang Sider. He's still not level 6. I just wish they would... Get him some free XP at the moment. MTR, don't go! Go away! Go away, man. Don't soak up XP from Mozon. As Mozon. 
Well, he tried to get something but suddenly marched the machine, so he has to back off for a little while. Put trials, delivered out. Oh, Stampede comes out, where? St top lane, they want to save lands. I don't think they can still do a plasma field comes through, actually. You're kidding me? They actually managed to save lands thanks to the Stampede there. And look at this Xang side. Do you really want to come in? There's the rocket player. Oh, he's gonna go for music and bad result will finish the job. Can he go for more though? Can he catch up to risk? I doubt it. Malphys, just in case from Godot. Concussive shot as well. But still one kill for hookshot. Not too bad at all. Plus of course Lance escaping there as well. And Mosen now still not level 6. He just needs like one creep. And yes, he gets level 6. Track will be available from now on. Gonna make immunity's life even harder now. Because of this, I still see you. Without, with the exorcism, cleared off the tier 2 bottom lane, so immunity, they're just losing so much map control and bald head. Nature Prophet, he's the one going for a mech, although they do have Enigma on the team. So Enigma might be looking at something like an immediate blink dagger pickup. Just to make 100% sure that you can actually get a nice black hole, although might be rushing a BKB as well. Even BKB doesn't make you immune though. Hookshot can still go through it. Lance already has power threads, drums, as well as a mech finished. 2 0 and 5 after all, as well. Oh, mid lane, they get stunned onto MTR, double ace as well. Actually, the mech keeps MTR alive, telekinesis up. Mystic Flare, not used yet, actually. Still not available for them. They get the counter. Can they go for more plasma field lands? He's tanking everything up under the tower of March the machines. Make him think twice. Actually, two heroes go down. Final bald head comes in from the side as well. He's tracked up, but can Mosin get the kill? Sprout. Oh, the black hole just to make sure bald head actually escapes. He can't see his TP though. And DDC, he comes in creeps for one right click. They do kill off the Enigma in the end. Baldhead does survive, but I have no idea why he cancelled this TP. Like literally no clue at all. That TP cancel was peculiar to say the least. Mosin still level 6. Or level 7 even now. So maxed out Shuriken toss, 325 damage. Yes. Yes it is. So pretty nice uh, burst. Plus a mini stun as well. Still, I think immunity, they're not too unhappy about how the fight went. They did get clockwork as well as Rubik by the end of it. As TDZ, only about 1000 gold away from his platform being finished. I mean, 10k net worth, he's still more than doubling that of the Tinker, but Tinker, slowly but surely starting to farm up. With the boots travels, of course, it's so much harder for Arrow to shut the Tinker down just because, well, he can farm globally. But Mosin, he's on the hunt again, Shadow Walk activated. He's gonna find Godot and might be an easy kill. Jinada, track and just leave the Churikentos for the TP out from Godot. Shadow Walk once again. Tinker trying to come in to help. I think Mozunga is going to get the kill. Actually, he's going to back off as Paul. The TP is in as well. Changsai used the Cogs already onto Musica. Another track goes out. So Musica can't even surprise Hoop Stomp them anymore. Or at least he shouldn't be able to. As Lance, Plasma Field comes through. Paul Dead is the only one getting hit. MTR. Nothing stolen at the moment. But here is here. Level 2 Exorcism. He's, oh, actually, Kayfin, he gets caught the Tinker, he's gonna go down, nothing to save him. But the result, sure can toss as well, just for the extra amount of damage. And it's gonna be tier 1, plus Tinker down, Tinker has buyback, but I highly doubt he wants to use it at this point. I mean, every ounce of gold is, in, is just so important for them. And look at this now, Exorcism still has a couple of seconds remaining, so... Tier 2, also taking some pretty nice amount of damage, down to half HP already. So Arrow, looking good, getting some map control, finally bald head, going for the split push, going for the rat. Xiang Saido might punish him for the bald head, is he gonna be fast enough? Better result activated, can he get the power core properly? Actually, he's holding on to them, waiting for it, waiting for it, and actually, oh my god, the Treants, the Treants actually tanked up all the battery results, so Nature Prophet didn't even get hit. Holy crap. Well, but Xiang Sai has himself the blade mill finished now. So can tank up the double edge or Mystic Flare or whatever it may be thrown at him. And of course Mystic Flare, he is one of the primary targets just because he cogs himself into it. So he sets up a Mystic Flare himself perfectly. As TDC, Bloodstone finished, plus another 700 gold. Might be holding on to boots or travel gold next. I mean, there's no point really in finishing up any other boots at the moment, I think, anymore. If you're just sitting on brown anyway. Might be looking at the BKB at some point as well, to be honest. With a BKB, you can make absolutely sure that you pretty much won't die. Most of the machines can still be annoying, but with a 1.6k HP pool, I think you should be rather fine. Of course, Xiangxai. 
He can make Tinker's life a living hell now with the blade mid. Top lane, DDZ took some damage, just the double edge. Wrath of Nature bounces through as well, but they might get the kill onto K Phoenix. Drums activated, they get the track as well. Lance, is he gonna be fast enough? No. For some reason, Lance. Well, never mind, he got Malphite, my bad. Hookshot. Oh, a little bit off target as well. He moved the track. Go that. He was fast enough. Or K Phoenix. Oh, there's the telekinesis music. He already got the stun onto Lance, but there's the turnaround. Mystic Flare comes through. Mech is there as well, and Lance actually might go down there. Mystic Flare. Not coming out yet, but it's not even necessary. Bald head, just with the right clicks, they do manage to get a kill. Black hole, he would have enough mana for it with that soul ring. But not gonna force the issue at the moment, Xiang side. With his hookshot on cooldown, immunity might be a little bit more prone to take a fight, especially considering Lance is down, so no mech for Raro. But Exorcism just popped from DDC. This is one the tier 2. Don't think they really want to force fights. I mean, tier 2 map control, it's all good for them. Looking at the graphs. It is a 13,000 gold lead still for Arrow Gaming. XP also almost 10,000. Tier 2 goes down. But Tinker has his blink 20 minutes in. Definitely not a fast one, but better late than never really. And with the blink, he can potentially get avoided of even getting tracked by the bounty hunter there. If you're fast enough to just go on the lane, blink into the trees before the track gets applied, you should be fine. MTR though, 1.6k gold in the bank. Oh, Lance, there's the hookshot onto Bald Head. Can Ishprof escape again? Blink out by K Fini. Cox, they don't find him. Oh, the Yule Scepter from DDZ. Bald Head, he was so close to making his escape, but at least he got to activate his Wrath of Nature, so getting maybe some gold in return here. But it's definitely not worth it. I mean, your Wrath of Nature is on cooldown, so if Arrow want to go for the push for this tier 2, the last outer tower. There is not much immunity can do now. I mean, the Tinker, yes, he can come with the March to Machines. But I don't, they might just go in with another hookshot in only 20 seconds time. Oh yeah, Xiang Sai. You show who is boss. Actually, oh, he kills him. Just the blade mail into Master Machines. It was enough to get the kill. Musica, the hoof stomp is gonna be there. DDC is overextending so damn far. No time to even use the Yule Scepter. Suddenly down to 6 plus no charges. He went way too greedy there. No team support whatsoever standing here. Although they will get the hookshot onto Musica. Static Link is already there, stealing a lot of damage risk. Might lose his life. A few more right clicks plus one field. Yes, Lance gets the kill. Go that drops low as well to the Static Storm plus the right clicks. But Bald Head, Telekinist up. Gonna lose his life. Buyback from Risk. Mystic Player on cooldown though. Buyback on Music as well. He might get a nice hoof stomp here. Maybe he's gonna get tracked up. Nice double hoof stomp. But Xiangxi still alive. One more right click to clean him up. But it's a tieback plus giving away a track kill. It is in no way, shape, or form worth it for immunity. They might go for Lance once again. He has the blade mill off his own now. There's the slow one to risk because, well, single target spell into a Razor. Not the smartest of ideas thanks to Unstable Current, which is level 3 by now. But Godot wants to go in. Malphite. Uh, actually, they pop the dust as well. Mosin might even go down here. He needs to break his invisibility. Track comes out for the extra moments in Plasma Field. They don't want to fight any further as actually Lance. He goes down to the Tinker just to the heat seeking missile. Mosin barely survives, but. 567 gold goes in the pockets of Tinker, so that's pretty good. In the meantime, though, DLZ, level 3 exorcism, solo Roshan, 22 minutes in, no problem. And suddenly, Goldcraft, almost 20,000 in Arrow's favor. XP, 14,000 or so. Four staff picked up on Mosin. And although the racks, as actually even the tier 3s, all of them still stand, I think Arrow Gaming, they are looking so ridiculously good that immunity. They're gonna need to just do a hell of a lot to come back into this game, of course. Oh, Hookshot actually comes out. There's the Mystic player as well. He has the Blade Mail activated, but it's just not gonna be enough. Three heroes surrounding him did manage to just end his life before the Blade Mail did enough. But still, the Blade Mail pickups on both lands as well as the Xiang side is so good in dealing with what immunity has. Lance, 2.6k 2.6k gold in the bank. Might be going for a BKB, might be looking at a straight up Aghanims as well. Blink Dagger though, picked up on Godot. So we might be looking at the second black hole of the game. I do believe we only had one. Mozon, oh, he's gonna find Kayfin, he's gonna stop it as well. But, well, that was not worth it. Giving away a 656 cold worth of mega kill streaks away to Tinker. So Tinker, he's actually gotten like 1.2k gold from just ending two streaks. In a matter of what, two minutes or something? Maybe even a little bit less. About two minutes, I would say. 
as power threads. We're picked up on Death Prophet after all, so I thought we might go for the straight up boots, but or boots of travels rather. But nope, wanted to tank up a little bit. Xiangxai, not gonna find Musica. Going for an Aghanim Scepter by the looks of it now. Just reduce the cooldown and they are once again going for the last outer tier 2 tower, which they didn't even manage to destroy with the last push. Do they have the exorcism up? Yes, they do. So if they actually go for a proper 5 on 5 fight now, they might have a pretty easy time in it just because level 3 exorcism is a bitch to handle. The tracks are there as well, the hookshot completely off target. I mean, the hookshot ended here, whereas the closest hero was like here. But, I mean, it's not a huge loss. Still a little bit annoying, but they can, they can survive. Another track goes out onto Musica. Level 1 tracks don't have the highest range, but DDZ now might be in some trouble. March the machines as Lance. Together with Xiang side, they just kill off Tinker. He has buyback. Does he have to use it though? That's the question. Another track onto Musica, so they want to know when the center actually comes in. And TDC still dropping low, has the Aegis though, so doesn't care all that much. He would lose the extra season, but tier 3 down, more tracks to come out, and I, I guess they're gonna lose the melee racks if they don't react now. There's the reaction, but no, the Hoofstone misses the huge scepter dodge from DDC. Beautifully done, and just melee racks down for nothing, nothing at all. Tinker didn't even deem it worthy to buy back since, well, he needs the next set of items, he needs the Dagon, anything to actually properly fight, so. Uncontested racks, a few kills given away. Aegis is still on DDC with now having full HP thanks to his exorcism returning to him. Treants, the nature's call, stolen from Rubik as well. Some push of their own, as actually Rubik might be in trouble. Oh, never mind, Paul, they're going for the TP out, they have the Shuriken Dust to stop it. A few more right clicks, Fate Paul thanks to the MTR. He grabs the kill, Tinker though coming in, he's gonna get the kill onto MTR. He's gonna lose his life for it, I highly doubt it actually. Shuriken Dust still on cooldown, but Kefini, blink, Shuriken Dust, Shuriken Dust, oh, not enough mana. Magic one Shurkentos might have been enough, but even then, might or might not have gotten in range properly. Because if it's from low ground to high ground, sometimes the just pathing of it is horrible. Oh, hookshot! It misses Xiangs. I couldn't get quit. Get it quite perfectly. As whoa, Xiangs actually goes down to Kefini, underestimating the power of a Tinker, and well, Tinker doing some good work still. Keeping the team in the game somehow, but TDC in the meantime. Oh, he's not gonna get stunned. They do have the black hole. Are they gonna waste everything for DDC here? They get the Malphites. No Mystic Flare yet. There's the Mystic Flare actually. The Silence is there as well. Ancient Seed. Gonna boost up the damage a little bit. He's gonna fall. Yes, he is. Breath of Nature comes through as well. Bolt head. Don't think he can escape a second time here. No Yule Scepter yet. He has a Heart of Terrace finished. Lance comes in as well. He had the mech and there's the black hole coming out too. But the <laughs> Static Storm. Eye of the Storm is doing too much. I don't know why I say Static Storm, but Eye of the Storm is the real name of the spell. Bald head though. He's gonna go down as well, Lance. He's just a beast at the moment. Only level 2 after Storm, but he also has a Heart of the Rise He's gonna go for Risk next. One more right click. They get the kills. And well, man, it was a 5 versus 2 pretty much here. 5 versus 2 with a black hole and immunity unable to do anything at all. Kefini just. I guess he didn't even ha have enough in him. And he went for a Yule Scepter. So not gonna even have the burst damage, just some utility. He can actually survive with the Yule Scepter, of course. It's a really nice pickup when the enemy has double blade mail. But now that the blade mails are there, plus the Heart of the Rasks on both lands, as well as DDZ. Plus DDZ, look at this. He's going for another heart. Just that's how manly DDZ is. Exorcism popped. He no care. 3.6k. 3.6k HP. Look at this tower melt now. You don't even need Aghanim's Heart of the Storm, really. Although DDZ has to be still be a little bit careful. If he takes hero damage. He's out of the rest, he's on cooldown and oh, Malphite comes through. Tier 3 falls already, lands, plasma fit just to stop the blinks, I think. Of course, some nice harassment in return, but most of the blinks, I would think. Did you see? Master Machines, now that it ends, well, they'll be fine. Bald head, tried to TP in from the side. But out of the rest will start kicking in now. Exorcism came back as well, did you see? Almost back to full HP. Melee Rex down, but they get the stun onto lands. They will get the kill on Razor, I think. But Telekinesis is there. No proper double edge risk. He's gonna get hookshotted in the face by Xiangxai. Nice use setter by Tinker, buying some time against the blade mails, bald head. One more right click, can he chase Xiang Sai down? No, he cannot attract movement speed, it's too much. It's a 4 for 0 exchange, plus the racks going down. I think this is more or less GG. Go dot buys back though, no black hole. Risk doesn't have the Mystic Flare yet for another 40 seconds. So what can they really do here? Well, maybe save the range per racks, but it's like, yeah, range racks, woohoo. 
Again, him scepter also finished on clockwork. We are 29 minutes in only. Somehow feels a little bit longer, but 28 to 12 is the kill score arrow. They have been looking so dominant from the start of this game, pretty much. And look at the graphs 30k plus gold lead. XP nearing 25,000, but I mean, it's pretty rare to see to miss 30 plus lead on any chart. Ah, it's the secondary heart of Tarak suddenly finished on DDC. 4.4k HP, guys. Get this guy a Shivas now. Get some armor as well on top of it. Maybe actually an AC even. Just to boost up the pushing power of their exorcism. But holy... Jesus, man. Holy Jesus. 4.4k HP. That is, I think, the most I have seen on Death Prophets. I have seen a similar amount on, like, a double heart of the Rask Centaur, but... Man, 4.4k. It's it's ridiculous, to be honest. Powers... The traits are on strength as well. Just for additional strength. As Mozen, he has picked himself up an ultimate orb. Might be a sheep stick in the making. Has himself... Level 2 track at least. He's level 12. Oh, the hook shot into risk once again. Battery so he can't do much of anything. Blade mail is activated as well. Pla not the plasma field. Midnight pulse and Shikshanks is still dropping low. I think they're gonna go for the chase. Nope, the stampede got stolen in the meantime. DDC is gonna clear up one. Can they go for music as well as DDC? He has other plans in mind. He doesn't care. He wants object object objectives. Man, my tongue is so twisted today. But... Is it gonna be a tier 3 DDC? Is a really hard kill to get. The Hoofstone does land though with the <laughs> double edge, but yeah, just everything tickles really. They most likely will get the tier 3, still just a matter of time as lands. Well, he's going absolutely man mode. Blade mail already in cooldown though. Malfoy stop under the tower. Midnight Pulse is there as well. Mosen. Oh, he dodges the Hoofstone, but lands not in the clear yet. Mystic clear. Got four step out of it. There's the hookshot landing onto two music. He goes down. Go that gonna fall next as well. Chunks. I might lose his own life here. Ancient seal. Woo! Run, outrun the March of the Machine. Yes, exactly what he does is Lance. Well, he goes into the base to die, wanted to get Tinker, but he buys back immediately as the last set of racks are under assault. And well, if immunity, if they can't defend this, they're done for as most. And he goes down to the Dagon, but Tinker, he's gonna get telekinesis up. The Yule Scepter actually purchased him off the track as well, but it's not gonna matter. The right clicks will be enough as Bald Head. Gonna go down as well, Shanks. I pushed him back with the Cogs. And this is GG Cold Arrow Gaming. Absolutely dominant performance here. In game number one. So immunity. Can they come back in game number two. And just throw out. Throw up the two game series. 1-1. One, one, or will they lose 2-0 here. I don't Definitely. They want to show their strength. They want to show that they are still. One of the better teams in Southeast Asia. But. We'll be back here. With game number two. In just a couple of minutes time guys. So. Do hope you enjoyed. And of course. If you did. Be sure to follow us on this channel. As well as Hefla TV 2. And Hefla Moke, The English channel for Dota coverage. And check out their social media. Hefla TV on both Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube will be youtube.com forward slash Heflamog. The links are below the stream and of course the votes uploaded into our YouTube as usually. And of course, if you want to su just support us directly, you can always subscribe for some nice subscriber emotes as well as just getting some income for us, for us to actually justify our casting. But in any case, game number two coming up guys, so don't go anywhere.